Hello and welcome to my brand new channel Easy Solutions. My name is Vivek and today we are going to talk about mobile wallets. But before I do that, I want to take you back in time to a very special day. The day was 8th November 2016. Yep. This day was indeed special because I learned a new word, demonetization. That's right. Now this video is not going to be about demonetization, but the demonetization has helped curb black money and corruption only time can tell. But it certainly acted as a catalyst for all the digital wallets. And since then, we have literally seen this space explode. We have seen mobile wallet companies register a soaring growth with even Panwalas accepting Paytm payments. And since then, government has been pushing for digitization by introducing so many new services like UPI, IMPS, NWP, etc. Now these new terms are enough to confuse the best of us, especially when we don't know what they mean or how they work. In this video, I will try to ease out this confusion by answering questions like what are mobile wallets with so many companies aggressively vying for your attention, which is the one that you should go for. After the introduction of UPI and BMAP, are they still relevant and why are mobile wallets suddenly transforming into payment banks and what exactly is a payment bank are just some of the things that we will find the answers to. Let's get started. Let's start with the most basic question. What are mobile wallets? So mobile wallets are nothing but the digital equivalent of your physical wallet. In your wallet, you put money and spend as you wish. Similarly, in mobile wallets, you load money by using net banking, debit cards and credit cards. And then you can spend this money on online and offline merchants that have tied up with your service provider. For example, Paytm and Free Charge have tied up with IRCTC so you can book train tickets using their app. Higher the number of merchants these companies have tied up with, better is the user experience for customers like us. It's simple right? Just load money on a wallet and you can spend it for e-commerce payments for your school and college fees, for purchasing insurance, booking hotels and tickets, recharging your phone, DTH or data service, paying electricity bills, the possibilities are endless. Now the play store is flooded with so many wallet apps, each having its pros and cons. And with each app offering coupons, cashbacks, discounts and whatnot. Before we make an actual comparison, let's divide these apps into types so it gets easier for us to compare and analyze. Let's check out the types. So the first type is telecom backed wallets. These are the wallets that are backed by big telecom operators. Now these are the apps that started out as wallets but they have now got their licenses from IRBI for payment banks. These are the first to be transformed into payment banks. We will talk about payment banks in a bit, but for now you can think of them as a mini bank. Now Airtel Money has already started their payment bank operations and the rest will soon follow the suit. The second type is wallets by banks. Major banks such as SBI and HDFC had wallets of their own, but then NPCI that is National Payments Corporation of India, an organization that is backed by RBI and looks after all the retail payments in the country, launched UPI. UPI stands for United Payments Interface. And now, almost all the bank's base wallets work on this interface. Hence, these wallets differ completely from other two types because in these apps there is no need to put money in wallets as the money is directly transferred from one bank account to other bank account. And the third type are the flavor of season the independent wallets. These are the wallets that are most popular and most used by consumers. Demonetization acted as a steroid and now we have companies like Paytm valued close to 5 billion dollars. Paytm says that they clock 78 million active users a month, while Facebook India clocks 140 million. At current growth rate, they can soon overtake Facebook India, at least that's what their founder thinks. But with NPCI launching BMAP and UPI, we will see how these independent wallets fare in the future. If you are using Paytm or Free Charge, you might have received a mail saying your wallet will soon be transferred to the newly incorporated payment bank. Before we compare and analyze these apps, let's address this first. Now, what is a payment bank? A payment bank is nothing but a mini bank that operates on a smaller scale and does not involve any credit risk. In simple words, it's just like a normal bank except it cannot give loans or issue credit cards since these banks don't have to open branches or invest in infrastructure, they can give high interest on savings account. 
Airtel Money which has already started its operations offers 7.25% interest rate which is higher than all other banks. Its retail outlets double up as the payment bank branches. The savings account has a limit of 1 lakh and this amount is completely insured by DIGCG so it ensures 100% safety. Some of the features of payment banks are it is based on the principle of high volume low value transactions. It promotes paperless banking so no checks, DD, slips etc. It offers a very good interest because of low cost of operations. It can sell financial products like life insurance, general insurance and mutual funds. Transfer and remittance through mobile phones so it promotes digital India campaign and their key objective is to achieve financial inclusion and increased access to financial services. So basically this transformation of mobile wallets into payment banks is actually a good thing and it was necessary to overcome the threat of UPI and BMAP. Consumers will have an option to continue using their wallet as it is or they can earn interest by keeping money in payment bank. So you may be having questions like is Paytm or free charge app going to change? So the answer is no. The user experience is more or less going to remain the same and the app will continue to function as it does. So then what is going to change? Their wallet business will get transferred to a payment bank but they will keep running as it is. So all in all this will give an edge to mobile wallets as consumers will also have an option to earn interest as well as added bonus of safety. Now that you guys know what your wallets will get transformed into. You might still have a question that how can you choose a wallet from so many options or should we just install Paytm as default setting? Let's find out. Okay, here's a comparison chart that shows the transaction limit and charges. So as we can see the maximum transaction limit for Paytm is 25,000 per month. For free charge it's 20,000 and it's more or less the same for other wallets. The point to note is that these limits are for non-KYC customers. So if you get KYC done, that is fill the know your customer form, then this limit can be increased up to 1 lakhs. With most of the wallets upgrading to payment banks, filling KYC form is going to be a standard requirement. Now the second parameter is maximum amount that can be transferred to a bank in a month. So if you are receiving money from people you might at some point want to transfer it in your bank account. So these are the current limits. The third parameter is the maximum amount that can be stored in a wallet at a time. This limit is governed by RBI and is capped at 20,000 for all wallets. And the fourth parameter is the transaction fees that you are required to pay if you want to transfer money in your bank account. Now these are the limits that are mentioned by the companies on their website. I have to say that Paytm Free Charge and Mobiquick are very opaque as far as transaction limits and charges are concerned. Both Oxygen Wallet and Airtel Money had mentioned all the limits and charges in one place. While Information is available in parts in case of first three. I tried to get in touch with them and Paytm replied saying there are no charges for transfer to bank till 31st January while Mobiquick said there is no transfer fees currently but they reserve the right to change it when they wish. So there is always an element of surprise consumers can look forward to. I wish these companies were a little more transparent by displaying all the updated transaction limits and charges in one place so that Consumers are not charged any convenience fees without their knowledge. But the good thing is, when your wallets get upgraded to payment banks, these limits and charges won't matter as your wallet itself will become a bank. Without further ado, let's have a look at the top 5 mobile wallets in India in no particular order. The apps were rated based on factors like stability, acceptance, user experience and customer service. So the first one is Paytm. There's no point of this list if I don't include this one. Founded in 2010, it is the fastest growing wallet app in the country with 147 million wallet users and Play Store rating of 4.4. Though I have seen that customer service is not that great, it still deserves to be at the top because of high acceptability and ease of use. Next on this list is Free Charge with more than 10 million downloads on Play Store and 4.3 user rating. I have been using this app since 2014 and I have to say, this is my personal favorite. The app is clean, clutter-free and easy to use. 
it offers lots of cashbacks and also if your mobile gets stolen or in case of any fraudulent transactions wallet balance is insured up to 20000 another popular wallet that has to be in this list is mobiquick they have more than 40 million smartphone users and user rating of 4.2 they have a bbps license from rbi which makes them best for paying utility bills fourth on this list is the geo money app with more than 10 million downloads and user rating of 4.2. And last but not the least, Airtel Money, which is the first to start up payment banks in India, offering a high interest rate of 7.25%. Rather than getting confused by so many options, consumers can actually use this to their advantage. As more competition only means better deals for consumers. And if you are only using one or none of these apps, you are missing out on deals other apps are offering. And then comes UPI. As you can see, none of these apps are running on the UPI interface. I can make another video on that if you guys want. But for now, I can only say that UPI has a certain edge over these wallets as it is interoperable. For example, if you are using Paytm, you can only transfer money if the other person is using the same app. In case of UPI, you can transfer money from one bank account to other bank account using just a virtual payment address, VPA, that is just like your email address, thereby completely eliminating the need of using a wallet. Hence, there are news reports like these in the media. Though each of these articles holds some weight, I don't think mobile wallets are going to die anytime soon. I agree, there are certain drawbacks while using these apps and their customer service leaves much to be desired for. But all the mobile wallets that are in the top must be doing something right so that so many people are using it. India is on a brink of digital revolution and these wallets are playing their part by providing digital banking solutions within everyone's reach. Demonetization might have forced people to use e-wallets but I don't think people are using digital payments out of fear. Digital is a sign of progress, not obligation.